Okay, let's move from there to um, what the Bank of the Free is up to in their latest launch. Team was dream. Okay, so could I basically um, get into merchant acquiring? Um, what does merchant acquiring mean? So it's almost like agency banking, but no agency banking. So if you're a business, you can now use a, a CUDA POS to accept payments, facilitate payments, basically. It's not the first time they're doing it. Last last year, I think March, they launched um, Soft POS, which is basically a, you can use your smartphone, if it's NFC enabled, of course, mm -hmm. to your smartphone can act as a POS machine. Um, I don't know how many of you have smartphones that are NFC enabled. I do. But, sorry, I wasn't asking <laughs> asking the audience. But really, that's that's um, what this um, soft POS um, was supposed to do. So it's a bit interesting that they are now launching, uh, they are physical launching physical POS, POS terminal. terminals now. So you can get, you can pay outrightly, I think it's 75,000 naira, or you lease a POS from them. Those are the two options I think they have. And it's a, I don't know what word adequately describes it. I think it's an interesting development. So what well, one, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Why are they entering the water with, I won't call them sharks, but big, um, those that have been there for a while, like um, Money Point, um, OP, OP, OP. Pampe, Car no carbon does not Not really. So I can't speak to their motive. Pay stack too recently, very recently. Yeah, pay stack does stuff like that. I can't speak to all their all their motives or their reasons, but I'll say this as maybe, I mean, looking at the way the market is, there are there are established players. Money Point, OP, uh, two of the biggest. Pampe too. Um, Pampe to a lesser extent, but Money Point and OP are the largest players in that space. Mm -hmm. And Kuda was for a very long time just a uh, it was it was a, yeah a new bank but it was for individuals for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I think in the last few years we've begun adding business banking features. So um that's so now we do not know what percentage of their customer base is made up of businesses because um the easy thing would be if you have a large number of businesses who actively use you, you can easily introduce these services, assuming they do not have alternatives. Mm -hmm. So now I don't know what percentage of their are using Kuda business yes, to start with. Yeah, because, because well, yes, that would make it that would make adoption easier. Mm -hmm. But we've seen a few moves in the last uh, a few developments in the last let's say eighteen months around POS um, businesses. So last year, Kipa basically shut down their um shut down that arm of their business mm -hmm. they later said they were passing it on to block um we don't know whether that was an acquisition or not but they they shut that down and at the time i was also wondering if one if one person is saying we don't see much potential in this market why is another person taking it off their hands um what are you seeing that we are not seeing mm -hmm. Uh, on the other hand, too, we've also seen a move from Money Point, who is maybe the biggest player, going from just uh, they are moving away from agency banking, for example, slowly getting into um, the uh, what do you call it now? Personal. Personal banking space, yes. So, why are they moving? And we've had a lot of conversations or a lot of chat around what's the future of the agency banking business model. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit curious to um for Kuda to get into the business when they are getting in. Um I don't know how that's going to play out for them over the next few years. They probably know if you they probably have some data points that informed Found it, this yeah. decision. Mm -hmm. But um I've spoken to a few people to like understand why Kuda will make the move. And the consensus is that this doesn't look like a very good move on their part, mm -hmm. partially because the space is so it's capital intensive for one. Um, the POS terminals, which was one of the things that Keeper alluded to when they were shutting down, mm -hmm. a POS terminal is 75,000 there. Mm -hmm. 
the business has to fuck that out, yes. which may not be a very easy thing for any business to do, at least in this in this current climate. So, um, we also that's one. Um, the cost, and that's partially because the cost of produce cost of getting these BOS machines have gone up in the last year, okay. Naira devaluation and all of that. So. It's almost like the cost of getting POS machines have gone up. And even before then, b- most of the players were actually giving up US terminals for free. Mm-hmm. Kuda doesn't look like they're interest- <coughs> interested in That's doing that. So you have to buy it mm-hmm. or lease from them. Yeah. So that would definitely impact um, so, oh, adoption. Oh, what if, although costly, what if mm-hmm. this is like an offline market acquisition strategy? It's, it sounds too costly to want to go into as an acquisition strategy, but what if it is? So yeah. we're just going to have to look out um, to their numbers if they decide to release their numbers. I mean, they may not release numbers, but even at that, we can we can just do a, we can make an educated guess. So this is no agency banking, to be clear. Mm. It's no agency banking. Agency banking, you could say, oh, okay, maybe there's a part of Nigeria where. We need to go. For, this is not a financial inclusion play, for one. So it's not a. You need businesses to adopt you, mm-hmm. and if businesses don't take up your offer, mm-hmm. so you for for first of all, um, you I don't know how many merchants, um, apart from POS agents now use Money Point for example. But you walk into any any place and you see Money Point yeah, POS. Yeah, no. There are a lot of them. I've been seeing a lot of um, even on branded POS um, machines. Mm-hmm. So first of all, if you're coming to me, you need to convince me to not use the person that I am currently using. Mm-hmm. If I'm a large operation, then I you may want to add, yeah, I may have several, yeah, which is common. Yeah. But if I'm a smaller operation, then I just need maybe one. Mm-hmm. I don't need a lot of it. So that's the first problem you're going to have. So yeah. um, how do you, we are even going to find the customers. Uh, do we have a large enough market for that? I think that's the first offline. question because it's not a, yes, it's an offline play. Mm-hmm. But the question is, do we have enough people? Yeah, if we do ooh, not have ooh. enough people then. We might not be able to take all these guesses until well, we give them a few months, right? Because yes. for them to launch <laughs> with that business at some point, they would have probably gone to the market. It's 14 months since they launched Kuda, Kuda business and they started mm. bringing in um, them, um, different features into it in the last eight or nine months. So, they would have seen some numbers that probably if, even if they want to start people if they want to start people that will adopt this they will probably just go back into their database of those people that are using Kuda business and start mm-hmm. from there so it's a is a number of is a play of um time a time play so we just Hopefully. look at how it will turn out for them to listen to the full conversation go to podcast.techpoint.africa podcast dot tech point dot africa here's the link you can click on that or go to google podcast apple podcast spotify and anywhere else to get your podcast and search for tech point africa podcast